When we talk about inverses, it's nice sometimes to remember that we can think of a function as a map that goes from the domain to the range. And for every number in the domain, my function maps it to some number in the range. When I think about the inverse of my function, it just goes in the opposite direction. In this case, since f, the, if I take f of 2, I get 4. That means f inverse of 4 is 2. f of 3 is 9, means f inverse of 9 is equal to 3. In particular, that means for f inverse, this bubble on the right represents the domain of my inverse function, and this bubble on the left represents its range. So the domain and range flip when we switch to an inverse. Also sometimes we have to do something a little bit artificial to the domain in order to make a function invertible. In this case, let's suppose f of x is just x squared. Now in order to invert it, I have to change my domain because here's what the inverse asks. f inverse of 4 says, I squared something and I got 4. What did I square? Well, I could have squared minus 2 or I could have squared positive 2. So in order to make x squared invertible, we have to artificially restrict its domain. And the easiest way in this case is to say we're not going to take any negative numbers. So minus 2 squared does give me 4, but I'm going to cut minus 2 out of my domain. Similarly, f inverse of 9 asks, I squared something and got 9. What did I square? Well, I couldn't have squared minus 3 because, again, I'm going to artificially chop that out of my domain. So to make this invertible, I'm going to say that this domain is non-negative. If we want to think about the range of f of x, well, in this case, it's pretty easy. If I take something from 0 to infinity and square it, I can get anything from 0 to infinity. And of course, if I think of f of x as the square root of x, then I notice it's very important that I'm only putting in things from 0 to infinity because I can't take the square root of a negative number. Let's say I want to find the inverse of a function. Let's say my function is f of x is e to the x squared. f inverse of x means I plugged some number into f and what got spat out was x. So what I really want to solve is for this empty box. I took something, squared it, made it a power of e, and I got out x. What was that something? OK, well, the way to do this, the easiest way to do this is to, oh, let's just call the box y, right? It's nice to think f of x, sorry, f inverse of x is equal to y. And now I just have to solve for y because I want to know what goes in the box. So I take the natural log of both sides. Remember, the natural log of e to some power is just that power. I'm trying to solve for y, so now I'm going to have the positive or negative square root of natural log. So now I have a bit of a problem. This should be a function. And what I realize is I should have restricted my domain. If I put in 1 or negative 1 into f of x, I get the same thing out. So as it is, it's not invertible. But I can think about this picture to the left, and I can say, well, I'm going to make my domain of f of x just non-negative numbers. So that means my domain of f of x is my range of f inverse. So f inverse of x is going to be, well, this y, this positive or negative natural log. But since it should be only non-negative numbers, it's actually just the positive square root. So in general, if you have a function and you want to find its inverse, you flip the x and the y. I can think of this as e to the x squared equals y. And when I solve for my inverse, I write e to the y squared equals x. And this makes sense both because of how we've shown you and also because we think of function as just going in the opposite direction, like this picture to the left. So I, 
I flip my x and my y and I solve for y and that's going to give me my inverse function. But you do have to be careful that your function is actually invertible and sometimes to make it invertible we have to restrict the domain. And usually when you're solving for the inverse something will come up that will give you a hint that you needed to be careful about your domain. Let's talk about the domain and range of this particular function. As before, we have this x squared. So we're saying our domain should be from 0 to infinity. We should cut out all of the negative numbers. Now let's think about our range. Well, if I plug a positive number into x for x squared, well, I'm going to get a positive number out. And if I plug in 0, I get 0. And if I think about e to whatever power, okay, I'm plugging in from 0 to infinity, e to the x is going to look like this. What I'm going to get out is all numbers greater than or equal to 1. And this makes sense if I look down here at my inverse function because log of 1 is 0. So I can plug in 1 here. But if I try and plug in anything smaller than 1, my log becomes negative, and I certainly can't take the square root of a negative number. So you can always check that the domain and range of your primary function match the range and domain of your inverse function. Certainly the domain of this is all numbers greater than or equal to 1. And since we notice that the log of 1 is 0, the range of this function is all numbers 0 to infinity because a square root is always going to spit me out a non-negative number and I can get all the way down to 0 by plugging in x is equal to 1.